Okay, so we have rules for governing how we configure electrons in our different no electron configuration notations. We have three of them. The Aufbau principle, Hund's rule, and the Pauli exclusion principle. We're going to run through each of these real quick, and then we're going to go back and throw in some examples. Aufbau principle, our first rule is also the easiest. It says you fill lowest available energy levels first. So if you have a 1s, a 2s, and a 2p, you fill a 1s first because it's the lowest energy that's available. Okay, Hund's rule, our second rule, every sublevel in an energy level gets one electron before any sublevel gets a second electron. This one's a little easier to understand with a picture, which we'll add in a second. All the exclusion principle, log name, pretty simple idea. Each electron in an orbital must have a different spin. That's the one thing we did with the up and down arrows. The picture demonstration for the Aufbau principle, starting with the lowest energy level first, that's on your diagonal rule, you start with the 1s. When that's full, then you go to the 2s. When that's no longer available, you go to the 2p. When that's not available, then you go to the 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, etc. You can follow the diagonal rule for that. It just says you start off here. When that one's full, then you go to the next lowest. When that one's full, you go to the next lowest. You can't jump and start wherever you want. Like, 4 is my favorite number. Let's start at the 4s. Doesn't work that way. You can't. That's the Aufbau principle. Hund's rule, it technically applies to s, p, d, and f orbitals, but it really only comes into play with the p's, the d's, and the f's. There's a yawn. Let's show you guys each of them anyway. So with an s orbital, 1s, 2p. We'll do the d in a second when we have more space. So this right here is your orbital. Each of your energy levels is made of your sublevels. So the t second energy level is t the 2p and whoops. The 2p and oh man. Okay, it's it's too early. Let's let's try again. Okay. So it's the 2s 2p. So this whole thing is your second energy level. So then each individual part, the 2s and the 2p, are your sublevels. And then within those sublevels, you have individual orbitals. The 2s only has one orbital because every orbital can hold two electrons and you can only fit two electrons in the s energy level. So, hooray. 2p, on the other hand, can hold up to six. So six divided by two is three. So three orbitals. These are the ones that we denote px, py, and pz. Okay, erase this and I'll try again. Okay, so Hun's rule for the 1s is pretty simple. You give it an arrow. There's no other orbital to deal with, so your second electron goes there. Pretty simple. Now the p's. Yeah. We're going to put Hun's rule and you can see it in practice. So the first electron in the 2p energy level goes here. Now let's say this was really 2p. Two. That second electron, according to Hun's rule, every sublevel gets an uh, en in an energy level gets one electron before any get a second. So px already has one. So now we go to py. That gets the second electron. And if this was really three p three, the third electron would go over here. And then if we hit three p four, then we go back and put our next electron here. Three p five. Oh, change those three p's to two p's. Two p, and then if we had a full two p energy level, we'd put it right here. 
So this is Hun's rule. For the D's, it's same process, just a little bigger. Now, I'm not going to give you D's very often in class, but just in case, let's make sure you know how to do it. So let's say we're in 4D. A D can hold 10. That's a terrible 10. 10 electrons. If every orbital can hold two electrons, that means a D sublevel has to have one, two, three, four, five orbitals. Now, D, 4D1 would be here, 4D2, 4D3, 4D4, 4D5. And then going back, 4D6, now that each of these little individual orbitals has one electron, now we go back and give him a buddy. 4d6, 4d7, 4d8, 4d9, and 4d10. Now once this one's filled, you'd go on to the next one, which would be 5p. So 1, 2, 3. But that's for another video. Okay. So our last rule is the poly exclusion principle, and we've actually already seen that one. We just didn't name it. So let's go back to that 2p orbital that we had. 2p sublevel, my bad. 1, 2, 3. So we have your px, py, and pz. Okay. So it says each electron in an orbital must have a different spin. These are the up and down arrows we've been doing in class, and I already showed you this, but now we're going to put a name to it. So our first electron has an up spin. Now, Hun's rule says we fill PY next. We'll give that one an up spin. Go to the next one. Now, when we go back and double is when we put buddies together, since we have no more orbitals to fill. But this is where the poly exclusion principle is. We have the up arrow, which means the next one needs to have a down arrow. So what poly exclusion says is that when you do this orbital notation, you need to have an up and a down. This is okay. Huzzah. This is wrong. And this is wrong. Don't do these. They're 100% incorrect. Different arrows. So like I said in the intro, long name, pretty simple idea.